that smell! Just like cornbread done to well. What you need, you know I got. So hands up, who wants to rock? Good evening, Metal Faithful. It is I, your mandated reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Radlich, and this is the Metal Hammer of Doom. Tonight, we are reviewing Seventh Rum of a Seventh Rum, the seventh studio album by Scottish heavy metal band Ailstorm. Do you talk like a pirate? It was released on June 24th, 2022 through Napalm Records. The audience is now on fire. The album title is a reference to Iron Maiden's 1988 album, Seventh Rum of a Seventh Son. Uh, seventh seventh Rum of a Seventh Son. <laughs> seventh yes. Son of a Seventh Son. I'm so tired. Right the, album, <laughs> the album was produced by the band's longtime producer, Last Lammert. It was preceded by four singles, Magellan's Expedition, Party, which we did a Metal Hammer of Doom Extra on, The Battle of Cape Fear River, and Seventh Rum of a Seventh Rum. And here's a man who likes his rum, and he likes to have fun. Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Dittens himself, Jesse Starcher, how do you do, sir? Welcome to the sea. Oh, no, wait a second. <laughs> wow, yeah, we're back for another Ailstorm album. Mm-hmm. I think this is the at least the second one that I've had the chance to talk with you guys about, maybe even the third. Um, I know that I really enjoyed, I think this is the second one, because I think I really enjoyed the one, your guys' coverage, Oh, see, I don't have the discography in front of me. Two got, two albums ago, whatever, whichever you. one that you. was. Wasn't that? Yeah. Yes. That wasn't Sunset on the Golden Age, was it? I it, think it I was. I believe it was, yes. No, it was No Grave But the Sea. Oh, yes, that had Fuck Like an Anchor on it. Okay, We're all right. we put then... you right in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I think they try to follow that up on this album. With, uh, unfortunately, not. Uh, does not hit the mark in my opinion. Oh, Cannonball's hilarious. I mean, yeah, I mean it's I mean, funny, you, but it, it is not fuck with an anchor. No, 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 no. nothing is as good as fuck with an anchor. Right, but Cannonball's right. funny too. I, I enjoy that one. But yes, we covered No Grave But the Sea in 2017, Curse of the Crystal Coconut in 2020, and now we're on our third Ailstorm album. We did not cover Sunset on the Golden Age. That was 2014. As yeah, I, you guys, I, I could have swore you guys covered that because I remember yeah, specifically. Yeah, I think we did. You know what? I'm that at... was the first wooden leg. <clears throat> it also had Surf Squid Warfare, which there was a Back to the Future reference in that song. And I remember, uh, you know, you guys talking about it and me uh, ha- having a good time listening to it. I swear you. Oh, we did. You guys no, covered right. that. Yeah, this is our fourth say, I'm one. Pretty sure we did. No, you're you're absolutely right. Ailstorm, Sunset on the Golden. I have the list right here. <clears throat> nice. Sunset on the Golden. I'm sorry. I have a cold. Leave me alone. Um, All right. I have, uh, yeah, Sunset on the Golden Age. So this is our fourth Ailstorm album. We are consistent. Indeed, indeed. So well, one thing yeah. that we are, and gassy. <laughs> oh, yeah. So gassy. Especially tonight. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> we, well, we love our Ailstorm. We love our pirate metal. So I don't really have to do any real, like, table setting here. So let's say we, uh, <laughs> let's say we jump into the music. What do you think, Jesse? Mm, jump into the sea, sir. Let's do it. Well, before Walk we do, I forgot, to introduce, I forgot to introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Eyebrows himself, Robert Cooper. How do you do, sir? <laughs> you know what's funny? I, my aunt told me when I was 14 that girls like bushy eyebrows. And uh, just you wait. Girls are going to be flocking all over you for those things. <laughs> no. And it seems like the only women that are flocking to me over my eyebrows are actually flocking to Mark to talk about it. <laughs> I'll tell you what girls like, uh, Robert Cooper. Fat wallets. Well, that's what they like. Mm, oh, Ooh, you oh, know, yeah. I have a fat wallet because I just haven't cleaned it out in so long. <laughs> it's got a lot of receipts. 
<laughs> a lot of receipts. A lot of receipts. <laughs> Got a lot of business cards. <laughs> Blockbuster video card in there. Uh, you can be like my stepdad. He still, uh, he for years had an action video, which was the local, which was oh, the local, local rental mom store. and pop. Yeah, yeah. Nice. He kept that. He kept that some <laughs> bitch around a lot longer than he needed to. All right, let's jump into the first three songs. <clears throat> The first three songs here for uh, Seventh Rome of Seventh Rome. We've got Magellan's Expedition, The Battle of Cape Fear, and the aforementioned Cannonball. Ball up your cunt, Jesse Starcher. <clears throat> Stick your dick in a blender. <laughs> I don't know how that's not the funniest thing anyone's heard this year. Like, it's it cracked me up. <clears throat> <clears throat> ah, some funny stuff on there. I like Ailstorm because obviously a lot of their songs are very upfront with their hilarity. But 
some of my favorite parts of Alestorm is when they make you work for the joke. Okay? And such is Magellan's Expedition. Where <laughs> at the very end of the song we have uh, I don't know. There's probably like nine or ten lines in Latin. Mm -hmm. And Google Translate, I will read to you, sir, the translation from Latin to English, what is being said here. Space fake landings. Poison group one voice control coffee machine, the healthiest <laughs> of algae. <laughs> 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 and that's repeated a second time uh, and then at the very end we have circumnavigate the endless quest no idea what they're meaning obviously it's just a bunch of gibberish which I think is completely on purpose they just threw a bunch of words together in, in Latin to make it sound cool and they did that before on a previous album uh, and I knew it was going to be happening again a lot of the gags throughout these Ailstorm al albums are repeated um but when you look at the rest of Magellan's expedition, it's a pretty straightforward song. Uh, I think the same thing is going on with the Battle of Cape Fear River. And then when you get into Cannonball, oh my goodness! Well, yeah, that is definitely not a straightforward song. That is that is uh, that is silliness to the maximum. Here. Um, Again, not as good yeah, as Fuck with an anchor, but it's still the. <laughs> so I was I, I every once in a while, especially when I'm like not in a great mood. I will listen, I will go back and like replay stuff that always puts me in a good mood. So like our Metal Hammer of Doom extras, I have watched a billion times. Um, <laughs> so some of those, some of those two billion. Um, I can't get enough of you taking the BDSM quiz. I will watch that like to go to sleep at night. Um, <laughs> but uh, I also like, will go through TikTok and just kind of go through Pat Gessner's band pitches again. And like, I just did, I just went through them all a whole bunch recently and he was talking and he did, did the one with Ailstorm. And he talked about, like, and we're Ailstorm, and we're like, we swear relentlessly. And he was like, have you heard us talk about the anchor? And I die every time I hear that line. Um, and so talk about the anchor. <laughs> you know, oh, and, and I feel like at this point, like, I feel like fuck like an anchor, they had really, like, crossed the Rubicon into, like, excessive vulgarity. And now that's oh, just yeah. become a staple of their sound. Like, I don't feel like... I, I can't remember if they did it on the previous album, but they, there's definitely now, I feel like, one song per album where they're just like, let's be as violent and as vulgar and as funny as we can possibly be. You know, and, and so it's like, you know, stick a cannonball up your cunt and put your dick in a blender. It's just, they're just like, like sitting there with a pan, like, what funny shit can we say that's, like, horrible and make a song out of it? Um, I just wanted to say one thing, and then I'll pitch it over to you, Robert. Magellan's Expedition sounds like every Ailstorm I've ever heard in my life, except for Nancy the Tavern Wench. Like, I like the Battle of Cape Fear River, and, and obviously I love Cannonball, but Magellan's Expedition, honestly, you could have convinced me that was on Captain uh, Captain Morgan's Revenge or something, and I had believed you. Yeah. Uh, I'll say that I don't necessarily agree with some of the reviews I've seen on this album, but uh, I do feel that uh, some of these songs are definitely emblematic of Ailstorm as a whole. Mm -hmm. Like, th this is definitely Ailstorm doing its Ailstorm thing. And if you like Ailstorm doing its Ailstorm thing, hey, this is your album. It's, I mean, there's lots of fun. Uh, Cannonball, I do kind of feel, is a pale imitation of uh, Fucked With An Anchor. Even though I do like that now we are uh, equal opportunity, if you will. <laughs> Everybody deserves to be just uh, destroyed in the groin by various <laughs> destroyed things. Destroyed in the groin. Yes, yes. I learned to tell you. The previous album had your pirate ship can eat a bag of dicks. So <laughs> that's probably the other one that you're thinking of, Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. That is in the same vein of what we're talking about. The main vein, if you will. <laughs> Consider it drained. <laughs> Interrupt um, you, Go ahead, man. Yeah. Up. No, no, you're good. Uh, I, I definitely, I, I feel like these first few tracks are a, do a good job of kind of setting us up. We get our video game sounding song, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, uh, which is thing. another one. Their thing, like in, in some ways, I do feel like this is kind of the greatest hits of Ailstorm. 
mm-hmm. very in much terms of what they offer. And it's funny you say that, like, where where how many albums in, and they have like a very distinctive sound. There's certain things they do every album, and it's just like, okay, it's more of that. Like, I'm enjoying it, and I have enjoyed what I've listened to, but I can see why some of the reviewers are like, are you going to do anything different? Here's my problem with that, though. If this was a different band that wasn't kind of jokey, they would be okay with it. You know what I mean? Like, we have done so many albums on the Metal Hammer of Doom over the years. And I'm like, well, this sounds like the last one Lamb of God did or something. And it's like, okay, but they, but the re- review, like, we'll tear it down. But the other reviewer is like, it's great. It's like, no, it's the same as the last album. But because it's Ailstorm, and I think it's popular, it's like a chic thing to kick Ailstorm when they're, you know, because, I don't know, because they're a joke band, that they don't get the same, um, they don't get the same room to just keep doing what brought them to the dance in the first place. Well, I think it, that kind of goes to a place that, that a lot of times one of the better things about comedy is when it kind of gets you, catches you off guard. It's, it's, I kind of feel like with comedy, if somebody's doing the same thing over and over, eventually you're going to be like, all right, yep. You're just going to be kind of be able to call it. Yeah. And I think sometimes that's why uh, more of your comedic albums or something just aren't as well received just because, you know, with, with comedy, it's once you've heard it, heard it enough times, it's kind of loses its luster. You can just, doesn't really get you anymore. Yeah, I get that. There, yeah, I I wonder if there is. You, you speak about the reviewers there. I'm wondering if there is some, I don't know, uh, pushback because of the whole uh, racism thing that happened here. Oh last yeah, year. with the uh, like Glory Hammer. Glory Hammer. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, I some, forgot about that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm wondering if part of that could be also. I was oh, thinking the same thing, actually. Like, judge, judge the album on the merits of the album. Don't put your fucking virtue signaling in there. I mean, I, I'm i saying that, but when we get to our review section, maybe we'll find the one specifically that you were talking about before we went on air, and we'll, uh, yeah, there's, there, yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see what they have to say. Yep. All right, let's go to the next three tracks here. We've got party in the USA. Um, party under blackened banners and blah, 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 blah.
Right. I have no idea what the hell they're talking about there. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are singing the praises of Hungary. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, apparently, Hungary is renowned for the affordable dentistry there. No. Yes. Uh, that is a lyric that is in this song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it is actually a love letter to Hungary. I did some translation because the chorus is basically all in Hungarian. Uh, but when you translate it, it's just like, you know, hail to wonderful Hungary or something something along those lines. Hungary, you are so wonderful. Uh, so, yeah. And that's, I, I think, the of those three, part, P-A-R-T-Y and Under Black and Banners are my two favorite off of this. Yeah, Under, I don't know. under Black and I, Banners I'll, I'll go with, really, I was going to say Under Black and Banners really slams. Yeah, I really do enjoy, like, in the middle of that song, they break into some I want to say it's, it's some type of organ that goes insane uh, <laughs> and it's it, it's great it sounds fantastic uh, but P-A-R-T-Y is a great jammer too I mean when you listen to that it's it's a lot of fun um, so you know it, it, I don't I can't even say what track 6 is I, I mean it's decent but you know, I, I'm not finding a song that I hate. I'm enjoying what I'm listening to. Under Black and Banner stands out to me. P A R T Y stands out to me. So, I'm okay with these three. Yeah, I I was gonna say Under Black and Banner, like I said, is is really heavy, and I I love the the rhythm to it. Uh, that second one, the Polish Polak song, um, I guess, or no, Hungarian is what you said, the hungry Hungarian song. Hungry, <laughs> hungry Hungarian hippos. <laughs> Um, I like that one a lot too. Party's okay. Uh, I I just I find it, I still don't know what that means either. I think I find myself as I'm listening to it, like I enjoy the album when it's on, but outside of maybe one or two tracks, I kind of stand out. I'm like the rest of it's just like hey, it's more, it's more Alestorm. And, and I want to bring this up now. Um, when we come back after the next few tracks, we'll have a full. What does the angry metal guy think of all this? But uh, I do have the quote here from Metal Hammer in a negative review of the album. Dave Everly of Metal Hammer stated the Ailstorm, that Ailstorm proved that the joke is wearing thin for their seventh album, and their I'm a Pirate shtick was once mildly amusing, but 15 years of cheeseball folk power metal and general yo-ho-hoing twattery have flogged any vestiges, <laughs> have flogged any vestiges of entertainment out of it. I, we talk about what? this with... Yeah, I, I needed to address that now, um, and, I'll, and I'll throw it over to you, Coop, but... I, we talk about this on um, Damn You Hollywood, where it's like, you're not really reviewing the album. You're giving a personal opinion, and you're basically saying, like, I don't like this, so it's bad. Which is not critical analysis in any kind of way. It's just, so, you know, <laughs> it's just it's you just state like an opinion. your opinion, man. Yeah, and it's like, that's, that, that's deeply unhelpful, though. It doesn't really tell you anything about the album. It's like, who are you to say that the joke's wearing thin? What if I like the joke? What if it never gets old? Like, how how can how do you how can you speak for the vast array of metal of Ailstorm fans? You know what I mean, Robert? Yeah. Uh, what it, I will say that I can respect an opinion that's, I guess, coming from a looking at it, maybe not on its own merits, but kind of in a, I guess, in a pattern. Yeah. Because it it kind of goes back to comedies in a way a, a lot of comedies you know if you let's say uh, fucking love Kevin Hart I don't know or maybe you saw your first Kevin Hart movie last year and you think it's fucking hilarious that he's short black and yells a lot <laughs> uh, like yeah you're gonna think this guy's a fucking comedic genius and you really love his stuff you watch the 10th Kevin Hart movie you like alright it's kind of weird and thin do you love Kevin Hart maybe the 10th one's not so bad it's one of those your <laughs> mileage may vary things yeah for sure uh, like for me, the joke hasn't necessarily worn thin as much as I'm like, ah, the pirate guys. Like, it, it's not really new or fresh, but it's entertaining for me. I I enjoy what they're bringing across, but I could also see, you know, back when I used to listen to 500, 600 albums a year, like, you know, uh, after a while, something that might be seem kind of new and fresh, or at least just even if it's a little samey, it's kind of comforting. And kind of great when you're listening to the 200th version of the same thing. 
I was um, thinking about um, I saw a movie tonight on Hulu, The Princess. We were talking about it before we were recording, and it's it's nothing special. I mean, it's a funny idea. You have this one princess who the entire it's ninety minutes of her hacking and slashing her way through this tower because she doesn't want to be married off to a prince for whatever the reasons are. I was joking. Feminism. Like, her, Jasmine, and Cinderella from this last year's Cinderella remake all need to like form a you know a force because <laughs> the girls get it done right, Jesse. A force. <laughs> so anyway, um, I was we were talking about how like not every movie needs to be a ten or and they're all not going to be one. Sometimes you just have a straight five, and that's okay. I I, I think this idea that every album has to be this mostest uniquest thing ever is ridiculous like and and it's one of those that i i can agree with the fact that because it's almost something i find funny that especially when you look at morality Mm -hmm. uh you know you can't have a bad guy without a good guy or vice versa because if everybody's good then somebody has to be bad on a moral on some sort of moral Slope, Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's always going to be that sort of idea. And, I mean, with music, yes, not every band has to be something special. I I guess I back when I used to listen to so much, uh, of course there were albums that I listened to that I knew was not going to be anything special, and I just kind of enjoyed it for the merits that it was on. Sometimes right. I wouldn't enjoy it at all. Uh, but a lot of times I think, especially with there's so much you can do with music uh, – uh, the ones that are just kind of samey and there they exist. It's kind of like with films. Uh, mm-hmm. Not everything's going to be yeah that's this what fucking mind blowing thing. Right. And it's kind of funny too that when you look at like you know the new Marvel movies come out this week. I'm mm-hmm. very excited for it. Uh, it is the bloom is off the rose in a way with a lot of those. It's become very. It, it's kind of like with the Sailstorm album. If you fucking love it, it's going to be the greatest thing you've seen. You're going to love it to death. Uh, is it going to be, you know, critically loved? Maybe. Is it going to change your life like the first time you saw one of these movies? Probably not. <laughs> it's just one of those, now it's just become so commonplace. Not as exciting. Uh, yeah. And that's okay. Not everything, just like you're saying, not everything has to be a 10 out of 10. But I will say, I guess the reason that people tend to... Uh, well, at least the the reason I feel like some people do uh, digest, and I was going to say ingest, they're eating it. Uh, was, was ingest the word to use? I don't know. I'm tired, too. Uh, but the uh, reason that people consume, there we go, sort of media is in a lot of ways to try and get a different perspective or something fresh and new and exciting. Uh, and I, I can see why, especially somebody that does this professionally, won't feel that same way. Damn it, Dave. Sorry, the cat. Uh, so the cat has his own opinion. <laughs> so Jesse sent me some messages here. I'm going to read these verbatim. Uh, you ready, Jesse? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I don't think our listeners are, but go ahead. <laughs> On August 23rd. And by Brit- the way, these are quotes. From- <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> like, uh, please don't words. isolate these <laughs> and use these to make it sound like Mark or Adelich is saying these things. AI that will one day rule the universe. <laughs> yeah. This is me reading a quote here, not me uh, doing a diatribe. I'm not banging a shoe on the table yet. August 23rd, a brand new Twitter account posted screenshots of a private Facebook conversation between members of Glory Hammer. In this conversation, which has since been dated back to August of 2017, Glory Hammer and Alestorm founder Chris Bowes, as well as bassist James Hutzman Cartwright, and keyboardist Michael Barber discussed theirs and Alestorm's attempt at having sex with as many of their fans as possible. In doing so, they referred to them in an extremely misogynistic and racist manner, with Chris Bowes referring to the black fans that they had sex with as niggers and coons. This goes on. September 3rd. uh, Both Not a good look. No. Chris Bowes and Glory Hammer issued separate statements confirming the authenticity of the leaked messages and begging for fans forgiveness for the hurt, distress, and anger that they had caused. Glory Hammer further added that they categorically denied any accusations of abuse made against any of their band members. Can we just talk about this for a second? I I don't know what the context is, so I'm not I, I don't want to go out on a limb and be like, okay, you know, it's this, this, and this, and therefore I feel this way. So I'm gonna come at this a little bit more generally. If all they did was have a private conversation 
and their privacy was violated, and then it was put out for the world. They they didn't harm anyone, and I don't know if they did. That's what I'm saying. Like this is just very general. If they didn't actually violate anyone's consents, and there was nobody in the room that was like, "Please stop doing that. It's bothersome to me," and they kept doing it anyway. If everybody in the conversation was into it, and they didn't hurt anyone, I'm kind of on Alestorm and Glory Hammer's side. Like, no, they shouldn't say those things, but you also have a right to some degree of privacy. And in your pri- and in your private lives, I've been known to do it too. You say things you wouldn't necessarily say in mixed company, and you say these things to your trusted allies and friends and family that you can't necessarily say to other people because you assume you're going, you know, your your privacy is not going to be violated. You know, so I I don't know. I I get. I, I get why people would be like, they said a bad word. We should not listen to Ailstorm anymore. Okay, but they didn't... <laughs> they weren't out on stage. And they're like, we're Ailstorm. Fuck the black people. Like, none of that happened. This is a private conversation, and it had no right being published. What do you think, Jesse? Uh, as far as... <laughs> no right being... <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's like, I'm not here. He's just like, uh, the the views of this have nothing to do with the Home Depot. Uh, I don't think it I don't think it's a I don't think it's a far leap to make an assumption mm-hmm. that somebody that uses those words in this day and age mm-hmm. is racist. Yeah, it's. Uh, I can kind of see the like those words. I guess don't have any. Don't really have a play. At least we're trying to eliminate it having a place in modern society. Well, I, mean, I, do, I don't want to be the guy that that argues for the use of slurs. However, I racist I, I, words argument, mean things. Your argument though is not that. Here's the thing. I, what I'm saying and what you were saying are completely different because okay. you what you are saying is that there is a private conversation and what is being said in, in that private conversation should have remained private. And therefore, you know, our or other people's uh, perception of mm-hmm. what these artists do on stage and in their albums should not be judged right upon the conversation that they had prior right. they, they didn't I write understand fuck with an anchor but only black people like no it's right. just fuck with I, an anchor i understand what you i understand exactly where you're coming from there mm-hmm. the problem is is that now you, you you i say now but i mean it's it's pretty commonplace for if anybody uses those words and are are tied to those types of slurs you're going to be labeled as a racist and nobody's going to want anything to do with you. And therefore well, your album and your, your album sales are going to suck as let, the weather. Let, let's, let's back that up a second. Cause okay. I, cause you, you swerved on me and, and you didn't go where I thought you were going to go with this. Okay. Um, cause I was thinking about like right to privacy and all of that. And I was thinking about, you know, you have all of your information, all, all this private information on your phone or your PDA or whatever. And, and then somebody hacks yeah. it, quote unquote. <laughs> Shut up. Um, P- what, what had, who what has had a, happened? Who has a PDA? <laughs> what, what, what had happened in this situation is one of the glory mem- glory members, <laughs> one of the glory hammer, one of the glory hammer members got fired, and okay. most of them are thinking that he took the conversation and published parts of it because See, he had access bullshit. to your fault. He had access to it. Yeah, like you were you were okay with them saying all of this shit, and then like, then you lost your job, whatever the reasons are, fair or not fair. And like, well, now I'm gonna like. Uh, well, if I'm going, you're all going. Yeah, everyone's yeah, going, down with, going down with me. Going down with me. Yeah, I, I see. I don't. I it's hard for me to buy that. Like you know, and say, oh, you know, I I, I cannot get behind. We lose all sense of context because somebody said a, a mean thing. Again. Intent matters, context matters. If the guys are having a private conversation and they say some things that among that group of guys is okay, look, man, we have said some horrendous shit over the years. I know I have. Uh, I mean, I've I've said it on Clamato. <laughs> <laughs> 
Lamato. <laughs> Even though I, that was really me trying to be an intellectual who and I had no <laughs> no place. But, uh, but like yeah, I, it, we we've I mean it's yeah, we've all said things that probably we kind of regret, but yeah, I no, and I, I do I agree. I don't regret any of it. But um but my point is like we <clears> talk before the show start. And those are private conversations and they're not, not meant for public consumption. I I just I have a hard I mean I, I hear what you're saying about if they said it they probably are but that's also a little judgy if in my opinion because I uh, think not, you have you have to judge somebody when they use those words do you and it, it, yes you uh, have I mean it, it okay somebody that uses those type of slurs in the climate that we're in man. Oh, Ooh. now it's the climate because I'm thinking. I was watching the corner earlier today, where they, where, where you know, DeAndre and his buddies refer to each other as the N word every other sentence. Uh huh. Right. You know, and you know right. it's colloquially. You know it's like saying "my friend," right? They're, and they're you not think that's slurring the way, you each think other. That's the way Chris Bose, Chris Bose. Was no, it? not at all. I'm not that dense. What I'm saying okay. is, what I'm saying is, that's if, not a slur at that point, right? It's, uh, yeah. It's it it's one of those like it's still, I guess it's kind of like the the card, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, I guess it's a very different when a European white guy is just saying it casually, referring to, yeah. But uh, I also do kind of I, I guess on where I'm thinking is it's also if this is supposed to be a more comedic album. With that thought in mind, it's not. It's even less funny. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. oh, damn it! Now I'm like, oh, damn it! Now I'm like, oh, like it's just one of those. You're thinking, shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this in the next. That's, but that's it. not mentioned in that review, though, right, Mark? It's it, not they don't in the sentence that I read. That. No, it's a, th- it's, no. it's the same old shit, and we're tired of it. That was the whole review. We're tired we're of tired it. Tired of we're tired it. of it. Well, Here's the last thing I'm gonna say to you, Jesse. As I take a you, gasping you, you breath. You say it. <laughs> um, I can see why you would think, oh, these guys are inherently racist. However, I have talked to people, and I have been one of those people who uses colorful language. And sometimes it's just the colloquial way that you speak. There's no intent behind it. Racism is this very specific thing. It's the belief or practice that your race is superior to other races or other races are inferior to yours, however you like it. And sometimes people just say shit, you know? Like, I, I think about the Hulk Hogan thing, right? Oh, yeah. So Hulk with Hogan's the, clearly not a racist. He, that that, that man would have let Mr. T bang him in the ass. You know he would have. He loved Mr. T. Hulk Hogan loved Dennis Rodman. Like, he loved all these, like, famous celebrity black guys. He also used the N-word when talking to his daughter. I... I, I, I don't think it, it's always an either or. Like, there are there not shades of gray? Are there not, is there not context for these things? And and then take that a step further. It feels like we're always willing to throw the baby out with the bathwater for any small misstep. And that's the thing. So on this one, you know, after reading that, it's like, eh, I mean, I don't really want to jump on in front of the bullet on these guys. But on the other hand, their privacy was violated. They didn't put that out there. They were they weren't like the Dixie Chicks, you know, like on stage, like publicly shaming their country or anything. Like they said it privately. And I go back to like we have said stuff privately that if it got out there would not make uh, any of us look great. So, and if that's Here's what people an are, idea. You, if, if, don't say it again. Don't. don't. Don't put it in a way that could be archived. <laughs> exactly. It's that, the fucking internet. Don't write uh, that shit on everyone, there if that's the case. Everyone has to be perfect. I understand. No, but nobody no, can it, just no, talk. No, I don't no, make mistakes. No one, no one has to put that out there knowing that it's going on to a platform that is being recorded in some way or could potentially be exposed in another way. These oh, guys right, had the, no idea. Was this during like, a recording studio? I, I thought it was... Was this like during a recording session? No, I, it was on a it was on a messenger. It was like their Facebook chat or something. Yeah, it's it, it's on a messenger. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Facebook conversation. Okay, I think again, you, you, I, I, again, whatever you write is going to go on the internet in some kind of archive. Uh huh. And 
if you have if you piss somebody off that is in that conversation maybe you should have thought well as, as little of a possibility it, that uh, this could happen okay. it could happen maybe i shouldn't say it is 2022 and I, a friend of mine and i were talking today about how some people still don't know how to use computers like my my wife will be the first Trust one to tell me. I talk to plenty of people. <laughs> yeah, uh, like you yeah, sit there like uh, like you better watch what you say on Messenger. People don't even know what fucking Messenger is. Come on, like, like, what's a Messenger? I think we're still even in, at this point in time we're still struggling with public uh, discourse and identity and how I mean think about like the people who like tweet and delete. You know, like, they put stuff on Twitter, like, 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 I think this. They put it on Twitter, then they're flamed, and then they delete their Twitter. Because, like, right. people don't... Und- the very thing you're talking about, Jesse, is the thing that people fail to grasp on an ongoing basis. I think you're asking a lot of people, is what I'm saying. Um, I don't think I'm asking a lot of people to, you know... Again, let's not say, tweet and delete. Let's not say, let's not say the words <coughs> and, and break ourselves of that first. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to be like, no, no, no. I feel the need to slur people. I'm not I, saying that. I, I, I really feel like you know we need to make make America great again, and that's that's slurs where we're going to come start. back. We're going to start. I'm bringing back, back slurs. We're we're taking it back. That reminds me of my awful ex, where I used I did make that quote mm. from uh, Clerks Two, and she chewed my ass up and down a wall. Yeah, see, and I was like, oh I think this is like, why. But it's a quote, and I'm like, she's like, it's not funny. It has no place. I was like, all right. Um, I, I, I had a coworker that was that was such a snowflake. She was so sensitive about everything. Snowflake. It, it Damn, Fox me, News. Shut up. Um, it drove me crazy because like you could. Here's the thing, Jesse. You're not being unreasonable. Hey, don't use slurs. Right. Right. Okay. Here's the problem. It starts with that. And not to be Jason Teasley and let's get on everything is a slippery slope and it all goes to fascism. Like every <laughs> single thing. Everything's a slippery slope. <laughs> Mustard on a hamburger, that's how we get to fascism. Like, it, no. I, <laughs> is that like, something? That, I was gonna, you had me for a second. I'm very gullible. <laughs> I was like, wait, he didn't fucking say that, did he? <laughs> Jason Teasley, if you ever listen to him and Eric, uh, their, the, their aborted Black Irish show, fucking... Jason's argument every single week was it's a slippery slope. Like, is and I wrote, I wrote him one day. I'm like, is that your whole thing? Everything is a slippery slope. Like, you are one paranoid motherfucker. Um, it's very easy to say don't slur. There's my a, problem. There... My problem is that it never stops. Because you know, and now you get to a place where you can't say anything. Everything is offensive to everybody. Yeah. I just, it's like I don't want to be the guy to be like, no, 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 slurs are fine. No, they're no, not. No, I... But. No, they're not, but the minute you start in with that, somebody comes behind you and says, and you know what another thing I don't like is this, and then another thing I don't like is this, and now suddenly you're into new speak and double speak and no speak. And, you know, that's how they get you, Jesse. That's how they get you. <sighs> Sounds good, Mark. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> I love when Jesse is utterly exasperated with me and he just gives up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I completely understand what you're trying to say. And I, I was curious if that article did mention this, because then you could probably say, well, they may have been influenced to give this thing a half a star like they did. Um, Let me see if I can find it really quick. i tell you what. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play three more songs, and then when we come back, we'll see what the Angry Metal Guy thinks, but I'll also find that, that article. How's that sound? All right. Sounds good. All right. Uh, ah, oops. All right. Here we go with the next three songs. Seventh rum of a seventh rum, bite the hook that bite the hook hand that feeds, and return to Tortuga.
Um, <clears throat> I have the article here. Can I go first, or you want to go first? No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, disgrace pirate meddler skulk back from another bout of binge sulking. Build sulking. Disgraced. Yeah, well, we're already uh, off and running here. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Uh, the world's a depressing enough place without being reminded that the Ailstorm are still going. Oh, this is so prejudiced. Oh, boy. Their I'm a Pirate Stick was mildly... Or, <clears throat> this we heard already. Was mildly amusing as the soundtrack to an early afternoon festival drinking session, but 15 years tease ball folk, po- folk power metal, dick jokes, and general yo-ho-hoing twattery have flogged any vestiges of entertainment out of it. Seven albums in, and we're left with a bunch of gurning cosplayers yelling R. Well, it would be Yar, you asshole. <laughs> Uh, I'm really having problems with this person basically taking shots at pirate metal altogether. Well, I mean... They're also not <laughs> reviewing the album. No. They're reviewing the band. Yeah. Which, I mean, at, at some point, sure. Like, am I going to listen to Ted Nugent much? No. But I also would listen to his album understanding, hey, I don't like the guy. So, I don't feel like I could give a non-prejudiced review of it. Kind of like, this is a very prejudiced review of it. This ain't a fucking half-star album. No, this guy's an asshole. This this guy was like... Yeah. But, but Jesse was talking about, I wonder if he's just basing this entirely off of the um, the controversy. Controversial. And he Not absolutely is. He has decided that yeah. Alstorm are a bunch of like clan members and is like, their album sucks without even hearing it. Where um, I'm trying to find the comment section to see if people just like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Well, I found this from Reddit, so God only knows what like what the Reddit thread says. Oh boy! Oh. As we all know, Reddit is the uh, yeah. the home of very civil discourse yeah. between them and Twitter. Um, sorry. Uh, I'm reading. I'm reading this Metal Hammer. Uh, no relation. Yeah, no relation to us. We're the okay. Doomy one. Okay, hang on. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, seven albums in, we're left with a bunch of co- gurning cosplayers yelling "R" at each other with the joyless enthusiasm of a dog licking its balls. Seventh rum of a seventh rum is as grimly lazy as its title. Witless wheezing hornpipes, wooden leg, part three, and party are. Upteenth generation photocopies of songs Ailstorm were tossing off a decade ago. I mean, you could say that about so many bands and so many albums and so many songs. Right. Um, this guy must not like ACDC very much. I mean, look, as, <laughs> mu- as much as I love fucking Hate Breed, like, th- th- are their albums that distinct from each other? No. I mean, yeah. It, it, again, this guy must love ACDC because TNT and Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap are practically the same song. Like, okay. Like, it's one of the, and it's one of those, like, there are certain bands, like, for example, Nab Lewis Cars, one of my favorite bands. Every fucking album of theirs is something wildly kind of different, and I, I fucking love it. On the same sort of token, uh, like, yeah, like, I fucking love Aim on a Mars. Their stuff is kind of Aim on a Mars. You walk yeah. into Aim on a Mars knowing what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah, Same I mean, with. Could you imagine, like, if Ailstorm just went straight, no jokey pirate metal? Wouldn't be Ailstorm anymore. Album? Like, nope. it wouldn't. It no, would not be Ailstorm anymore. Right. Yeah. Like, what would be the point then? You know. Um. I came here for Wooden Leg Part Three. <laughs> yeah. Really. Like. Yeah, like. Why else would you? That's fucking... why we're here. <laughs> um. Hang on. So let me keep going with this. Hats off to singer, guitar player Chris Bowes who has done his best recently to derail his own career. Oh, fuck off. Oh, get ready. Get ready here, for the next Here we go, Jesse. Here, here's yep. your... <laughs> this guy is your... Dave Everly, your new best friend, asshole. Uh, <laughs> it, it, was he in the Everly Brothers? This charmless dickwaddle was caught... Dickwaddle. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> that, that, I, love, I love that phrase. I'm going to use it. Yeah, this is yeah. good. This charmless dickwaddle was caught exchanging misogynistic and racist messages with members of his other band, Glory Hammer. Can we can we just stop there for a second and talk about misogyny for just a moment? Have you met women recently? I mean, any woman, any any woman. 
Because most mm. of them are just like, treat me like the whore that I am. Look, I'm not saying you should treat every woman that way because some like won't tolerate it and you shouldn't do it to them. Like, I, consent is real. But there are absolutely women that are just like, yeah, treat me like the bimbo slut that I am. And it's like, what are you as a man supposed to do in those circumstances if that's what the woman really wants out of you? You know what I'm saying, Coop? I played the fifth. <laughs> you fucking coward. Um, hey, hey, you know, you, actually, my girlfriend ain't got time to listen to this shit. She's in, <laughs> she's in PA school. There you go. But, yeah, I mean, honestly, but like it's the the thing that I find very interesting, and this is coming from a uh, you know a white guy who's thirty. Uh, so you know, my opinion means a lot if you are an advertising agency, and means very little if you're on the internet. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I, I, that's what I constantly pop in. My girlfriend's like says something. I'm like, no, ma'am. I am a white male between the ages of 18 and 35. My opinion is everything. <laughs> <laughs> but something I, I do find interesting in, uh, I guess, in terms of a culture that, uh, and you know, I could be clamato, could be wrong. But in some ways, it's almost like, yes, treat me how I want to be treated. I want to be treated like this. Treat me like your little slut. But also treat me with respect. But but, but only treat me like the slut when I want to be treated like the slut. It's why at this point, I just, I I, I, I kind of have to learn what's going on in the room before I talk. Because I don't, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble if I like walk in and, I mean, yeah, it's one of those, like, if you walk in and make the wrong joke, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's like the I just, medieval dance class I, I was going to. I just I, know I've, so many women I've, that are like, no, 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 I want you to be a dude's dude. I, 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 like, they're, like, they're okay with mild misogyny. Right. Like, this, the, the thing with this, like, virtue signaling, <laughs> speaking of dick waddles, this virtue signaling twat waffle is... He's making this assumption that everybody is as snowflakey and virtuous as he thinks he is. And it's just yeah. not the case. And who is he to tell people what they should like and not like is my problem with this. That's fair enough. So, uh, to, to, Je to Jesse is my, sighing. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry. Sorry, Dad. Go ahead and weigh in. Well, I mean, it's kind of his job to tell us what to like. Now... Number no, one, isn't. I'm not defending this guy's review because, again, just like Coop said, this is not a review. We've not heard anything that really supports his independent review of the album versus what he thinks of the band itself. But as a reviewer, it's his job to kind of – he feels that it's his job to go through and tell us what he thinks of the album, which he hasn't done yet. <laughs> But, I'm beginning to think he's not going to. <laughs> uh, it, it, so uh, the only thing, yeah, what I was sighing about was like this guy, he's been basically groomed to believe that what his opinion, <laughs> that, his opin <laughs> that his opinion matters because he's a fucking reviewer yeah, for Metal um, Hammer. Fucking is metal is hammer. he a white man between the ages <laughs> of 18 and 35? <laughs> <laughs> as far as misogyny goes, I wish I could... I, I wish I had a, a, you know, I wish I had an opinion on that matter because I don't know any other ladies other than my wife, and He's we've already took the B. I've already taken the BDSM quiz. So everybody has a penis. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it awfully yeah. nice to have a penis? Yeah, it is. But yeah, I, I stepped in shit when I uh, quoted a 1995 Sandman promo in a. Uh, in a group that is mostly women, some of them uh, alphabetically LGBTQ, whatever the fuck other letters we have. Oh my god, uh, why do you hate the LGBTQI plus community, Robert? How could you not say the name correctly? Clearly you hate it's the I See how fucking easy plus. that is? That just rolled I off my tongue. plus Mark Rattledge. <laughs> that just rolled I, off my I, tongue. I can't fucking keep up. There's too many. <laughs> oh, they no, why, why can't, can't... Why do you hate the, the, the queer community, Robert Cooper? That you it's can't. because I don't get invited to their naked beach volleyball <laughs> parties. You don't really need an invite. You just need to say that you're coming. Um, I'll, I'll, well, I'll, I mean, that's just <laughs> common courtesy so you don't get it in their eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I went with the uh, life's a bitch, then you marry one line. <laughs> <laughs> went, went over like a lead balloon, eh? <laughs> <laughs> 
That went over yeah. like a fart in church. I Look, was like, uh, my buddy Nick, who one day I'll get on this podcast, was like, I don't know if you should hang out with these people if they can handle that joke. I'm like, well, yes, but also it's knowing your audience, and that was not the audience to make that joke in. He's like, I'm just saying. And I was like, and I understand what you're saying, but okay. I'm also saying. I'm going to go ahead and wrong. say that just because the guys in Ale Storm and Glory Hammer sat around talking about wanting to fuck b- girls and, you know, made some off-color remarks, that's not a reason to misjudge their album. You should judge it fairly, not because they're, quote-unquote, a bunch of twat waffles. Or, no, sorry, dick waddles. <sighs> Jesse? <laughs> you want to weigh in here, or should I just move on? No, oh, I'm, I'm just looking over some of the texts that they have here. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, please, re- please, in your sexiest voice, read off some of the choice ones. I don't understand what they're talking about, though. Like, <laughs> wait, hang on. Let me let me finish reading the article I, here, and then we can go back. Okay, to this. all right, all right. Are you okay. talking about the text that the band sent or the review? Yes. No. I'm yeah. No. No. He's re- he's 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 like reading the fucking group chat now, which is fantastic, and I want to hear it. But okay, uh, da, da, da. he trotted out a hand wringing apology about it all being a gag. Mm, stick to your guns, buddy. <laughs> Just like anyone does whenever they get busted. Handily. Ah, oh, come on. It was just a joke. No, yeah. Dude. Come on. Yeah. Now. That's, that's the kind of shit my wife and I say to each other when we've been caught red handed making a shitty remark. Um, keep it with the girl next to this. We were both but Handily so. reminds us of the sorry business here. Yo ho, stick a cannonball up your cunt. Yo ho, put your dick in a blender. Sings this comic genius. Fuck off. <laughs> Over the soul sappingly edgy folk metal workout cannonball. A song that offers roughly the same enjoyment level as squeezing lemon juice on a weeping monkey pox sore. Again, ah, that's, yes, that's a lot pox. of personal opinion. Someone is going to. I'm going the next... up to the. I'm going up to the search, and I'm looking. I want to see what they ta- said about the previous album, just to see if our reviews, because everything that he's got a problem with here, mm-hmm. would have been uh, with, the, the same the as the same last thing. album. Yeah. Right. Someone is going to it's the same band. Someone is going to whine that Alestorm are being canceled on account of Bo's transgressions. They're clearly not. Otherwise, you'd be looking at a at a blank half page. And the fact that Alestorm are still headlining decent sized venues and are on several festival bills this year says there's an appetite for what they do, no matter how god awful it is. Like COVID nineteen and Piers Morgan, it looks like we're going to have to live with this shit a while longer. This is the worst review I may have ever heard, and I read reviews weekly. This is such bullshit. Jesse. Holly Wright gave Curse of the Crystal Coconut. This is a reviewer for the Metal Hammer. A three and a half stars. Alestorm bust out the West Coast rap on new album Curse of the Crystal Coconut. Three and a half stars. I would say this album, as far as we've gotten so far, is maybe, if not just a smidge lower Mm-hmm. As far as a rating would go, no grave but the sea. This is a 2017 review, three and a half stars. Let's see, pirate metal nincompoops, attack of massive anchor. That's the subtitle here. Three and a half stars, folks. Let's see what they actually say about fucked with an anchor. Meanwhile, one particular song more than justifies the entrance fee on its own. <laughs> Alestorm have never been subtle, and neither have they ever be, pretend to be more serious or mysterious than they plainly are, but they have never been quite so hysterically childish and as a result hilarious as they are on platinum plated album highlight fucked with an anchor. <laughs> so so <laughs> let let's just for the sake of time. Clearly this guy went to the virtue signaling school of review writing and I and you know me Jesse if you've heard me and Robert enough times on this network we are not gonna we, we will not so easily forgive virtue signaling it's bullshit um there's no valid point to make here he's not reviewing the album he's decided that they suck because they're racist and so therefore their album sucks so it's just not how you do this but what does the angry metal guy think of all this oh well let's take a look here so rock, yeah. Maybe we'll get some impartial reviews. Let's just see if everybody is upset. <laughs> Let's find out. Uh, okay. Well, we don't really have much. Oh no, I'm sorry. Oh wow. <laughs> rock music raider gives it a three out of ten. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. All right then. Blabbermouth.net seven and a half out of ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have. Am I still? Where am I at here? This is metal. Delaware, Delaware. <laughs> Not Delaware. Metal Delaware. 
Dot D E does not stand for Delaware. <laughs> Maybe it's is it Denmark? <laughs> it's probably Denmark. <laughs> Delaware. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> The great state of fucking Delaware. <laughs> Has their own fucking web protocol. Uh, rating, 6 out of 10. User rating, 7 out of 10 on that website there. Stormbringer.at. Does that give them... Do they give a review on this one? 4 and out of 5 there. So uh, we have an 8.5 out of 10 from the Metal Observer. Sputnik Music, 3.5 out of... I think this... Yeah, 3.5 out of 5. User ratings give it a total of 3. So... I mean, I wouldn't say it's their greatest album to date, but I mean, there's some bright spots on it. It's fun. We're back to Ailstorm. It's Ailstorm giving us what Ailstorm offers. Yeah. There's a lot of text, by the way. I mean, they pub- they published everything. Okay. Can you, like, give me the top three? No. <laughs> can I can't. You I mean, okay, here we go. Three yeah, random good ones. Are you ready ones. for this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daddy Cre- Daddy Crud says, give her boobs a good old Sperman. Oh, that's innocent enough. <laughs> I mean, that's a, old... that's a good one, frankly. Listen, <laughs> do you know how many women I have heard say come on my tits? I'm uh, not that one. That's, that, that passes. Uh, that how passes many porns have test. you watched? I was about in to say, real uh, life, in real life, I've heard don't come, don't, don't come in my mouth. I don't want to swallow, but definitely come on my tits. I've also heard come on my face. Li- Lithuanians are pretty psycho. Ones. Wait, hang on. Cooper is talking about his vast experience with coming on women. Go ahead. I said I've not heard any of that, sadly. So where do you come? All right. So it's a girl's blowing you, or she's giving you a handy. Wow. Where do you Where do you finish? Let's, Why do I, I mean, let's just it? say that. Uh... <laughs> hang on, hang on. Old man Starcher has wandered into the deep dark alley of pervy pit of uh, pervy Get me the fuck out of here. Yet again, uh, let's just say spitters are quitters, and I've not dated one yet. Oh, okay. So, okay, but what are you getting a hand job? Uh, I don't. No, no, not really. I can't say. You dribble uh, all over the girl's hand like a fucking slob. No, you got to shoot that somewhere. No, like a gun. Just, would, no, it's. I, I'm saying that I've never really had a hand job finish that doesn't just end up with all the gravy. <laughs> how about you, Jesse? Where do you finish? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I love how you're both like oh, right boy. about now. See you guys later. <laughs> Exit yeah, stage right. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to let you finish, but Taylor Swift had the greatest <laughs> Okay. Um, um, Judge Radlich says, give him a good sperm on the tits is fine, because girls will absolutely tell you their preferred come parking lot. Go. Next one. Uh, I need it a gavel. Does not, it, it does Hang progressively on. get worse. <laughs> I just I banged my gavel. Next one. Was that your dong? <laughs> Just beat your fucking dick on the table. <laughs> it would make a different sound. Come on, Jesse, do another one. Uh, oh no, I am not. There are some. The, it gets bad. It gets do I need really to read bad. these? Hey, no, do I need to no, read them? You do not. I, I'll tell you what. Yes, read them in your own private time. <laughs> don't, no, don't we read have them somewhere where the AI can take your voice <laughs> and play it back. on a it's scale of one. Be a good idea. On a scale of one there. to ten. Give me a five. Give me two more fives. Two more fives. Okay. So Lithuanians, he says Lithuanians uh, are pretty crazy, I think is what he said. Uh, pretty psycho. Lithuanians yeah. are pretty psycho. Well, all the ones I've porked. Pretty fair That's to judge no- a country by three of its females, though. Nothing wrong with what he just said. Okay. No, all. all right. All right, then. <laughs> That's so why judge, it's a five. Judge, R- judge Rattledge, I'll allow it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh... Man, it does get bad after that, though. I'm just going to – here, I'll tell you what. Go to loudwire.com in your own time. Remember, it's getting late here, Mark. you got to get up early tomorrow. When you have time, then scroll down about halfway. The next Metal just... Hammer of Doom Extra, I'm reading all of these. Okay. That's... Oh, good. So not only <laughs> You know that whole audio, Dick Tracy thing video. we were going to do? <laughs> yeah. Now, where we're going to have a round table read? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. We're going to do somebody... this <laughs> I'm going to do this instead. <laughs> I'll be Chris. You'll be the Glory Hammer guy. Oh, man. <laughs> and I'll, Crud syndrome I'll, is And I'll make not good. faces just like the crowd <laughs> wants. Yeah. Like the Greek chorus. I think that, remind wow. me that this is what we're doing on August 4th, okay? Okay, sure. <laughs> I'm going to read yeah. Right on. Let me write it down here. 
in the trash. <laughs> Why? Oh, Why? no, it fell in the fire. Okay. <laughs> Is the problem that you won't read these on the air because you feel like you'll then get associated with the quotes? Uh, I don't like saying most of these words. <laughs> Which, I mean, that's, that's fair. Okay. I mean, that is, yeah. Okay. It what gets, about, it's bad. What about you, Coop? Will you, will you do a table read with me? Uh, I will I will try to go through as deep as possible, but also, one, yeah, I don't like saying a lot of those oh words. Oh, God. But what's, what can I say? I'm, I, I don't up want with... tagged in any of this on Facebook. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I, I, the last thing I would want is, Somebody to be like, what? Oh, he must be doing some kind of acting. Yeah, yeah my my aunt Ninny will listen to the one thing. Jesse, hang on. <laughs> your aunt Ninny, your aunt Ninny needs to not listen to your aunt Ninny needs to not listen to any of the Metal Hammer of Doom extras. <laughs> she better not. But she's but... gonna find out uh, how much of the old Starcher family kink kind of fell <laughs> off the tree. <laughs> oh I mean, man. Don't call her Aunt Nitty for nothing. <laughs> that fucking that fucking horse has left the barn a long time ago, bro. I don't know what to tell you. Um, all right, let's. We I, I, speaking of horses, I think we've beat this one to death. <laughs> there's there's good no horsey, horsey. Mm. All right, good conversation. So Jesse officially agrees with the reviewer that Alestorm sucks because they said bad words. Got it. I said no such thing. <laughs> this album's good. I don't agree with his review of the album. Okay. I mean, I think his review is quite poor uh, because he's not really reviewing the album. Right. He said I feel like. Do I feel like this is not a great their best album? It's not. Are there, there certain things to like? Sure. Is this a half star album? No. Right. No way. Yeah. About that. About the only thing that I could possibly give him at least a little bit of credit for saying something that might be relevant to this is the fact that there is what feels like some rehashing. But again, we've already talked about that. We're yep. coming back to Ailstorm because it's Ailstorm. Yep. Yeah, All right. Comics. Last two songs of the night. Here we go. Uh, we've got no bananas. Hang on. Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, yeah, da, 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 da. Here we go. Uh, come... Come to Brazil and the infamous Wooden Leg Part 3. Come to Brazil!
wooden leg, wooden leg. This was the tale of Jesse's wooden leg. <laughs> you said wood. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and give my final thoughts, and I'll throw it over to Jesse to um, uh, disengage from this entire podcast. Um, <laughs> I, I like the album. I mean, it's... It, the one thing I will agree with is kind of like you've won, you've heard one Elstorm album, you kind of heard them all. Um, and this one was not tremendously different from that idea. But I still enjoyed it. Uh, I liked what I heard on there. I, I was thinking about this, and we, we got we got away from this, but I never got to say this before, because we were talking about, um, you know, the, the, the fact that they're good boys that say nice things. And, and um, I, was, I was thinking about how many albums, and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited to hear the new whatever. And it's nothing like anything I've heard of theirs before, and it sucks, and I get disappointed. Like, Life of Agony. Do you remember that? All I, all I talked about was the new oh, Life yeah, of Agony. Oh, yeah, you were like, I fucking love Life of Agony, and we were just like, I was like, I, it, it's, it's here. Yeah, it's exactly. It's all right, but I didn't love it. I was or so... like, Ministry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, two and three times now, I've been like, oh, my God, new Ministry, hot dog. And then you listen to the new one, and it's like, I'm sorry, I thought they were good. Like... <laughs> I've made a mistake. It's very much the equivalent of, uh, uh, promise, this doesn't happen every time. Yeah, exactly. At this time, I won't burn the meatloaf. Um, So, here's my thing. Oh, no, is that sexual? (laughs) No, it's domestic violence. Not everything with me is sexual. Oh, I mean, I didn't know what burn the meatloaf was. Maybe you're a little too hard on the old uh, (laughs) old loaf pan. I don't know. Nope. If he would have said soap <laughs> meatloaf, it would have been different. Soap meatloaf. Is that a new way to talk about a sphincter? The old loaf pan. The old loaf pan. <laughs> Low pans, loaf pan. Anyway, no. <laughs> Low pan. <laughs> Low pans, loaf pan. No, I am absolutely making a domestic violence joke because that's the thing you do is you make a joke about domestic violence. My point is... <laughs> Cancel! <laughs> oh, no, I just thought of a, of a joke a friend of mine said one day that I probably shouldn't say out loud because this is recording, but, you know. <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> say the joke, Cooper. Say it. Say it. Oh, uh, what do you... Uh, <laughs> what do you... <laughs> you know, what was it? What do you say when you're, to your wife when she has two black eyes? <laughs> Nothing. You already had to see. You already said it once. Yeah, no, you fucked up the joke i don't what, fucking know what do you say to a woman with two black eyes nothing you already told her twice oh it was twice that's right <laughs> yeah two oh, eyes because yeah, she has two black eyes yes two eyes you, weren't you a teacher at one point jesus christ no i was actually quite poor at teaching that's why i wasn't a teacher <laughs> okay and why every time there's something that goes wrong in the uh in schooling i look at my mom and go uh-huh good thing i'm not doing that as a job yeah anyway um i'm just happy like they returned to form. The album was fun. I not a bad song on here. Jesse, what did you think? So, return to Tortuga. Uh, they covered their own song, which is fantastic. I love that, uh, and it's actually probably one of the best songs off of here. It's probably the best version of Tortuga, by the way, mm-hmm. um, because everything is the exact same. Wooden leg part three. Uh, we've come a long way since ah, you Japanese bastard. Uh, when he was getting his l- l- arms and legs cut off, wooden head, wooden head, um, and now was now there he's a just part like two. Yeah, yeah. There's a part two where I, don't uh, uh, I can't remember exactly what happens there. I think he's he gets he ends up talking with the ghosts, uh, and, and I think we get some Japanese and Spanish uh, happening in that one as well. Uh, but anyway, I was here for when. Came here for Wooden Leg Part 3. Come to Brazil. Uh, I mean, it's not much of a song other than... I don't understand. <laughs> it's. I want to read this to you, Mark Rattles. Tell me how this fits in, pirate, in the pirate way, okay? Okay. Uh, so it says, uh, so, Sao Paulo, you're out of luck. It's, it's time to drink some rum. It's time to say ahoy. It's time to shit my pants. This is the pirate way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it okay? So that, I have. It's not scurvy. No, listen. If you drink enough, you will you will shit your pants. Okay. Oh. Okay. See, I don't. Dr- I wouldn't know. I don't drink. Never been that drunk. Oh before. my god! Between the like the no sex having and no drinking, you guys are such teetotalers. Oh, like... listen to me, Don Juan. <laughs> I... Don Juan. 
I, I didn't burn any woman's meatloaf. Pan, I right? was like crying to you earlier that I can't get this hot girl to like me, and I'm Don Juan. No, I look. I, I'm more Spuds McKenzie than I am Don Juan. Okay, all right then. <laughs> I mean, at least you're not like, 2013 Robert Cooper or Max Headroom. Yeah. I've never seen any more like dated references to like you know advertising icons. I wow. Max Headroom. What the fuck was that? No. All right. No. Um, child, I, hey, Jesse. I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm moving away. Yeah. Uh, I'm moving away. Moving on. Here it is. Um, I enjoyed what I heard. There's a couple songs off of this I will gladly go back to. I would absolutely support anybody that would give this a, at least a three out of five. All right, you child. You're up. Go. How am I a child? You don't know who Max Headroom I don't... is. Hey, uh, I, I know of I said, Max Headroom. If I, just... I said Baby Jessica, would you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> what the fuck's a Baby Jessica? Oh my god. <laughs> I can't with both of you. Just I don't I don't know what the fuck it is. What's a Baby uh, Jessica? <laughs> she fell down a well when she was a little girl. And well, did old Yeller whole... help her out? There was no. A, a nation was captivated. Captivated. By Uh-oh. this poor girl that was still alive, stuck in a well, and we had to rescue her. 24 hours coverage. Uh, and by the way, I, I believe I was watching Max, Max Headroom when that story broke because it interrupted that episode. But go uh, ahead. See, see, I've heard of Max Headroom. That's just as far as I go, unfortunately. Uh, but okay. yeah. So, I mean, for me, yes, the, the joke isn't as fresh as it was. There's definitely them ripping themselves off a few times. Uh, definitely some diminishing returns. It's still not a half star album. Like for something to be half star, like it's got a, it's got to be super collider. It's got to fucking suck, and I hate it. Yeah. Like it's like I, I, I don't. I mean, in terms of credibility, I just don't feel like that guy really has it at this point. Uh, like I get it. Hey, I have my opinions, but at the same time, like you also have to kind of, in some ways, separate yourself from your opinions to get a. Hey, I mean, you could have kind of a slant to your review, but you still have to at least give it some merit. Anywho, uh, I'd say this album's a solid, like, two and a half stars, like, out of ten. Five. Fuck. It's five. Holy shit, it's almost 1 a.m. Fuck me with a rig. Yep. Uh, this is a long um, podcast for a uh, somewhat decent album. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... 90 minutes, that's about average for us. I was about to say, it's not too bad, uh... It's just we had an hour of uh, Metal Hammer of Doom Extra beforehand, which yeah, is that was only supposed so to be a ten minute podcast. Oh, oh, I forgot all about. <laughs> That's yeah, why it feels like podcast. we've been doing this for so long because yeah. we had two hour podcasts. Well, it's funny because like my friends will be like, "Oh, are you lo- are you recording tonight?" I'm like, "Yes." I'm like, okay, send me the link. They're like, there is no link. I do one of them in the can, and then I do the other one audio only. I'm not streaming any of this stuff. They're like, "Oh," and I can't tell you how many times I've had to like repeat that. It's like so frustrating. <laughs> Um, it's just, but, I'll, I'll tell you when I'm live streaming, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, this, I mean, the album again, Wooden Leg Part 3, it's fun. Uh, P-A-R-T-Y definitely more feels like a frat boy song than anything. Some mm-hmm. of this, like, I, I'm definitely, uh, maybe I'm getting older or their <laughs> joke is getting older. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the two. But some of the stuff just isn't as funny as it was last time. It could just be the fact that it's just not as new as it was. I mean, it's okay. just... Uh, I mean, yeah, it, there's only so many... Actually, no, I'm kidding. There's there, are, I would say there's only so many times you could fart and it'd be funny, but farts are always funny, let's be oh, honest. Oh, come on. Right. What are we talking yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's 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 like the... One of my favorite jokes to make is the hardly newer. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that joke is really funny when you hear it the first time. The rest of the times, it's really just the anticipation of you waiting for me to say it. You've done it <laughs> at least twice on the Metal Hammer of Doom Extra in, like, two different scenarios. <laughs> like Right. Yeah, and, rigor, and I, hardly newer was one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's one of those like it just tickles me to make it, but like there was once I'd done it enough where the guy's like, "All right, you got to find something else." I'm like, "Okay," like and then it just became a challenge. But there's <laughs> just a certain point to where like you know sometimes the material just can get a little old. Like Andrew Dice Clay, I think the guy guy has plenty of good ones, but uh, some of the stuff if I hear it <clears> enough. <throat> It's only going to be so funny. I love how we were talking about political correctness and whatnot. And what did I go with? Andrew Dice Clay. Uh, <laughs> Jack and Jill went up the hill. The, the hill to catch a, 
with both in a bucket of quarter. She'll keep down with two fifty. Oh, the fucking whore! Oh, yeah. little Miss Muffet. Sat, sat on a tuffet, eating her curds, curds and, and ways. ways. Long came a spider, he sat down beside her. He said, hey, said, hey, hey, what's, what's in, in the, the bowl, bowl, bitch? I got that on tape. I actually <laughs> yes, have that fucking... Why? I found that at a Goodwill for 50 cent, and I'm like, yes, this is what I must purchase today. <laughs> I had it when it was new, because I was that old. Uh, yeah, I, I... Was I born then? Hey, hey, Jonas, come here. Yeah. Come here, I want to tell you some nursery yeah, rhymes. You ready? Um, yeah. Okay. Don't, don't do this to me. Oh no! <laughs> okay. I want my kid to go to bed. Um, what, what, what's one we haven't done yet? We did Little Miss Muffet. And we did Jack and Joe. What's what's one I'm not? Uh done? oh. What about oh, me going to bed? What about the the one about uh oh the one Arova took over, and then she um, had a boat of road. Yeah 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 yeah. How's that start? Um. Uh. Oh, I can't. Hang on. Damn it. Hang on. Just go to bed, Jonas. No, no, hang on one second, Jonas. No, hang on, hang on. while you have the chance. Because <laughs> I want to say, I want to say not nice things to you. Um, hang on. Okay. Why? Uh, okay, here we go. What? <laughs> okay, here's one. What one can I say to an eight-year-old? Here we go. I, I uh, don't think there is one. That's the point. <laughs> uh, no, that's not the right one. Uh, what is up. You'll be what? fine. <laughs> okay, Let the kid go to sleep. <laughs> um, hang on. I need to know because there's a do one out. Give me a second. God, I can't say any of these. Um, no, that's okay. the point. The <laughs> okay. dirty nursery Come rhymes. Come here. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her old dog a snack. The cupboard was bad. <laughs> she didn't despair, so she let Rover munch. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Go, go to bed. <laughs> oh no! I had to stop oh, myself. No. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to know. Little boy blue, he needed the money. <laughs> okay, go to bed. Go to bed. I've never heard that one. That's just that's fucking good. Oh yeah. I hear he's the nicest guy too. Don't worry about it, Joe. I'll explain it later. Okay. When you're older. Much <laughs> later. Rock of my baby on the treetop. Your mother's a whore. I ate you, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Jonas, come here. <laughs> he's like, that. I want to go to bed. J- Jonas, come here. Hey, he's gone. All right, last one. Three blind mice see how they run. Where the fuck are they going? <laughs> All right, I'm who wants to do plugs? <laughs> Who's ready for plugs? Jesse, are you ready for plugs? Oh, I am. Are so you ready, ready to go to bed? <laughs> ready for plugs. Terrific. Well, we uh, started off this week with an Everyone Loves a Bad Guy for Thor with uh, Love and Thunder out uh, as of this recording today. Uh, then we had uh, Evan Bevins and Jesse Starcher, a little Jesse Starcher, review Jason think. Aaron's run on Thor, uh, Volume 1, The Goddess of Thunder, which all the boys like. Right, Jesse? That's what I heard. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. No no <laughs> problems with that at all. No, all, nope. all the boys flocked to the new Jason Aaron Thor when they, they gave it to a girl. Yeah, but <laughs> ooh, we could have we could have girls in comic books. What's yeah. funny is, is that yeah, it is, that is addressed actually in the book itself by mm-hmm. uh, a couple characters. So uh, it was, and it was a good conversation. I always like hanging out with Evan, talking about some uh, Marvel comics or any comics, really. Yep. Um, and then uh, myself and Robert Winfrey reviewed Minions: The Rise of Gru. At which at which point we had a conversation about Pixar, where I said, "Well, stop doing movies about Query McQuirison's gay picnic," and Robert's. And Robert said two things that I thought was very funny. They're like, now brought to you in Technicolor so we can show you all the colors of the rainbow. Dude, I was, I couldn't stop laughing. And then at one point we referenced A Wrinkle in Time and we referred to Reese Witherspoon as Romaine Witherspoon. Romaine? Well, okay, that's good. <laughs> Romaine? She turns into a leaf of Romaine lettuce in A Wrinkle in Time. Oh. And we've never stopped talking about it. Like, that is a, that is a d- damn you Hollywood staple gag. Um, speaking of stapling your gag, uh, we reviewed Obi-Wan, myself, David Wright, and little Ronnie Adams. Uh, this weekend, we've got a, we're going to re-air the White Snake Flesh and Blood. Jesse, shut up and kiss me. 
Shut up and give me smooches. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, yeah. And then we had another one for Elaviti. And then little Ronnie Adams will be joining me for a triple feature. Little We're Ronnie. Uh, the Screaming gonna... Boy podcast? Uh, the very same. We'll be reviewing A-Team, Miami Vice, and the Dukes of Hazard, And then, against my better judgment, we will be reviewing Halo Season 1 on the 11th, and then Thor, Love and Thunder on the 12th, and then I'm away for the, ne- for the following, for the rest of the week, as I will be at a nude resort. Picture that in your mind's eye. Oh. But Do you we have will to be... pack for that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's already packing. Oh, uh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> packing heat, bang, bang. <laughs> Oh, oh no! <laughs> um, I mean, you have you can't just walk in there, buck ass nude. You have There's to like, lightest, get through the, the gate. The lightest suitcase ever. Yeah, like, like, I don't. <laughs> I, I definitely don't need to bring a lot. I'll tell you that much. Um, and then uh, we will re- be re-airing our review of uh, the Legend of Tarzan from a few years back. So check that out. We also have an on trial re- um, re-airing for Inception, and then we're back on Sunday with myself and Sean Comer. Reviewing Studio 666, Tenacious D, and The Pick of Destiny, and Detroit Rock City. Jesse Starcher, tell them what you do. Yo. Oh, well, I do a podcast. A What's that? You do a ditty. D- ditty dumb, I ditty do a do. ditty. I do, I do a dumb little ditty. <clears throat> um, yeah, hey, the Source Material Comics podcast, uh, you can find that feed uh, right here on the W2M network. I have just, well, actually, I've got a few uh, podcasts in the can. Next Wednesday, Star Trek TNG X-Men. That's right. We get to see Picard. And uh, unfortunately, Charles Xavier does not show up in that comic book. It would have been great to see Picard and Xavier actually talk before, you know, know, Jean-Luc Picard become Xavier at one point. Um, That's not his real actor. That's not the real actor's name. But anyway, hey, check that out. That's going to be dropping this coming Wednesday. And then shortly after that, uh, the following week, source material will be dropping Fugitoid, uh, a discussion about Fugitoid and TMNT The Last Ronin. It's going to be me, Alexis Haina, and Benjamin J. Cologne discussing that. Uh, also, uh, I, I will tell you that at some point, TV Party Tonight is going to be dropping probably next week where Alexis Haina and myself got together and discussed the final four episodes of Hell of a Boss. So that uh, seemed to be a pretty popular first episode on the network. <laughs> I'll bet. From what I understand. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to, uh, the second one's going to be dropping most likely next week. So keep an eye out for that. But that's really all I have. All right. Um, Robert Cooper, you want to do a plug for a podcast you're not on? Yeah. Well, yeah, I talked I talk to, to Hannah and she's like, oh, I'm going to start season two. Uh, soon. And I was like, uh huh. <laughs> like, what should I? What could I do that would uh, bring viewers? I'm like, I, pff, I don't know. The fuck do I know about a sobriety podcast? Have you told her to maybe talk about coming on girls' tits? That that seems to do well for us. I mean, well, yeah, yeah it we'll see. Us, it gets us tens <laughs> and tens of viewers. <laughs> Have a vanilla guy take a BDSM test. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> how many how many views did we even get on that? For that one, we even know. Yeah. For, for for that one specifically, I guess. All right, hang on. Oh God, I didn't expect an answer. No, well, yeah, ask a silly question. All right, I'm going all the way back to the beginning of the Metal Hammer of Doom Extra. This video is sponsored by Shut Face up. Check. Okay, um, Shamrocks and Shenanigans House of Pain uh, has 50 views. Uh, Sabaton has 188. Lordy, Mary Blah 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 has 86. Ghost, Call Me Little Sunshine has 12, but that one was also, like, narfed for a while. Romshine, Zigzag, 146. Uh, Fozzie, Sane, which is the, the infamous one, 51. Watane is 46. This is not in the right one. Remove from playlist. Uh, Def Leppard, Let's Get Rocked is at 75 creator is at 51 borderline is at 64 ailstorm is at 68 now you know and knowing it's half the battle G.I. Joe just just ugh 
<laughs> no, it's great. Uh, I, I, Coop, have you ever seen the Fensler film, G.I. Joe PSAs? Well, like the classic ones? The, the ones with, no, I'm talking about the okay, ones with like, this give point, him the stick. It's not my fault give him the done. stick. Hang on. It's, it's, oh, I don't care. I you just... didn't care the last 10 minutes. I'm going to. <laughs> now I, it's my turn not to care. It's fine. I'm just I just saying I was ready to end the podcast. This is now all your guys' fault. Give me the stick. Don't give him the stick. Give him the stick. Don't give me. Okay. All right. How about pork chop, sa- pork chop sandwiches? <laughs> I remember pork chop sandwiches. Okay. All right. Well, at least Mark knows what I'm talking about. I, I have to educate you on the Fensler PSA scoop. I'll send them to you via messenger. Now we can end the podcast. Oh, hot dog. All right, folks, thanks for joining us here on the Metal Hammer of Doom. Be well, be safe, and behave.